Welcome to Psalm 120. I know, I know, I skipped Psalm 119. <laughs> we will get back to Psalm 119, I promise, but I want to finish the Psalms and then I will go back and we will break down Psalm 119. It is a very long Psalm. It's a beautiful Psalm and I want to really give um, the time it needs to really go through that Psalm. So we're going to do that later. So we're going to finish the Psalms and then we'll go back to Psalm 119. So today we're going to jump into Psalm 120. And as you can see on this Psalm, this is listed as a song of ascents. Um, and there are actually this, we're going to hit now a section of Psalms that are all called a song of ascents. Um, and that would be from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. So this is basically traditionally recited at the Feast of Tabernacles in the autumn of the year, which commemorates God's care of the Israelites during the time of the wilderness wanderings. Um, since Jerusalem sits on a hill, no matter where someone comes from, you're always going up to Jerusalem. So when you see things like that, like we're going up to Jerusalem, that's why, because Jerusalem sits on a hill. So pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem may have sung some of these songs of ascents. Uh, the word ascent can refer to the steps of the temple, um, or it could just refer to walking up to Jerusalem. Um, we're not really sure. Some scholars suggest that it's a reflection of the very structure of the collection of the Psalms, that each one is a verbal step um, connecting you closer and closer to the Lord. Um, but the message really of all of this collection of the Psalms is that Jerusalem is the place for coming together um, of the people of God for celebration and for commemorating and for acknowledging the goodness of the Lord and the help that God has been to the Israelites. And so that's what the Song of Ascents are all about. So let's read this one and then we'll walk through um, what it's about. But again, first, let's read a verse and pray, and then we will jump in. Um, I am going to read Psalm 119, verse 16, which says, I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. So Lord, we again, we come before you and we are so thankful for your word. We're so thankful for your decrees. And God, we pray that we would not neglect Reading your word, we would not neglect doing your word. Um, give us the strength and the ability to do that. Amen. So let's read this short psalm. Um, it says this, I call on the Lord in my distress and he answers me. Save me, Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. What will he do to you? And what more besides you deceitful tongue, he will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows, with burning coals of the broom bush. Woe to me that I dwell in Meshech and that I live among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So interesting psalm. If we want to put a category on this, this would be a lament. So we've been in a long section of looking at hallelujah psalms or praise psalms, and now we're going to look at a lament. And this one would be an individual lament. Some laments that we see will be community laments. This is an individual lament. So it's all about one person saying, here's what I'm going through. I'm calling on the Lord um, and, and uh, here's the struggles I've been through. We could divide this into sections. And if you want to do that, we're going to divide it um, verses one and two and then three and four and then five and six. Um, and if we, this first part would be uh, words of trust and then petition. So basically I'm trusting in the Lord and here's what I'm asking of God. And then the next section is words of vengeance, um, asking God to come against the enemy. And then the last part would be words of woe. And this is where, this is kind of like how they're feeling at that moment. So if that, that kind of helps us to kind of just categorize the whole thing. So the first part, 
I call on the Lord in my distress and he answers me. So again, there's where that trust comes in, right? Because he answers me. Um, and so if we want to highlight things, you could go like this and highlight the word trust and then he answers me, right? That That's why I trust him. And then the petition is save me, Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. And so... Um, Actually, some versions even say, deliver my soul instead of save me, Lord, deliver my soul. Um, we don't know what this person is going through who wrote this, but clearly they are um, having a very difficult time. And yet again, we see that they're turning to the Lord. Um, and then it goes into this vengeance. This is what my God is going to do. So I call on the Lord and he answers me. And then I'm going to pray to him, God, save me, Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. And then it's like, here's what my God is going to do. What will he do to you? And what more besides you lying or you deceitful tongue? He will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows with burning coals of the broom bush. And so here it's talking about the fact that God will not let this rest. He cares about those who are oppressed, okay? He hears the cries of people who are crying out for vengeance or what we call mishpat, um, God setting things right. Um, and his words are like an arrow, like flaming arrows. Um, so that's what that section is really covering. And then the last part, woe to me. So here again is that lament. And now he's going to go through and just talk about like how he's feeling. Woe to me. Um, that I dwell in Meshach, that I live among the tents of Kedar. Now, I read that and I was like, what does that mean? So I'm going to read to you a little bit of what I saw in um, some commentaries that would help with that because I don't know enough about Israel to know, like, what does Meshach mean and what is Kedar? Um, and the, one of the commentaries said that the psalmist may be referring to specific locations or he might be using those names as metaphors for places that are far away from the land of Israel. And so that would make sense if we're talking about how I love Jerusalem and I want to be near Jerusalem, but I dwell in Meshach and I live in the tents of Kedar, which are really far away. Um, that would make sense. Meshach was a descendant of Japheth, a trading partner with Tyre and part of the kingdom of Magog. So that would have been like Eastern Asia, that kind, that kind of area there. Kadar is the second son of Ishmael, um, which is a Northern Arabian Bedouin who was a warrior with bows. And so that just kind of, that's about all we get from um, the different commentaries that we read so uh, to me it's really he's just talking about the fact that he's so far away from where he wants to be and again the um Jerusalem is that representation of this is where God's presence is and so that's that longing for wanting to be there it says too long have I lived among those who hate peace and that word peace is shalom um, and, and that's that it's more than just peace. It's like, um, <clears throat> well-being. And he's saying for so long, I have lived uh, away from that. Um, but then he, and then there's that statement, but I am for peace. And when I speak, they are for war. So clearly he is in a spot where he is far away from where he wants to be. And I think that that, as we look at this Psalm, um, he he's understanding that it's in the presence of the Lord that I find my peace. Um, and I'm feeling like I'm far from that right now. And, I, and I'm among a people that are speaking of war. So this psalm, I think, is a good psalm for us to be reminded of when we're going through times where we feel like we are far from God. Um, and that maybe we are in a situation or in a world where where it seems like everything is at war and I'm not around those who are promoting peace or want peace. I have to go back to the beginning. I call on the Lord in my distress and he answers me. He is the God that is going to be there. He is the God that will answer me. And so in the midst of this lament of where he's at and what he knows God will do, he still says, I am going to trust in the Lord and I am going to call on him. And and that to me is part of that. When we talk about pray without ceasing, we talk about um, 
praying daily, praying um, often, praying um, no matter what I'm feeling and what I'm going through, I am going to continue to be a person of prayer. Um, I want to call on the Lord in my distress because I trust him and I know he's there. So God, we look at this verse and, and, and we just say, Lord, when we are in times of distress, when we are in times of feeling like we're so far away and, and where are you, God, Lord, help us to trust Help us to keep coming back to you and keep going and saying, I am going to pray. I am going to call on the Lord, even in my distress. Lord, we know that you are a God that answers. We know that you are a God who hears. And so, Lord, we just want to acknowledge today that we trust you no matter what life is throwing at us today. Help us to be a people that will continually turn to you. Amen. Well, I'm hoping that this little psalm had something in it that can encourage you to just keep trusting in him.